just two days back, I was watching a new Netflix documentary on the big bad billionaires. This documentary portrayed and sketched the journeys of three billionaires who ended up swindling taxpayers' money and became fugitives. It does look like ethical values, honesty, and entrepreneurship has become some kind of an oxymoron. Several studies of entrepreneurship demonstrate how in course of time, the entrepreneurs succumb to greed and start deceiving themselves and others. In recent times, we have witnessed in India several examples of dishonest behavior in public life exhibited by almost every section of professionals, from investment bankers to doctors to charter accountants to academicians to bankers to IT professionals, and the list is endless. The question therefore arises whether traits and values like honesty, integrity, truthfulness are innate and cannot be taught or they are acquired through observation of elders and becomes a way of life. A third possibility is if the environment is responsible for making an individual abdicate these values. The fundamental value for any living existence in the planet is honesty, self-preservation, truthfulness, and basic integrity. Let me explain this. We are born with these instincts. Would there be any individual who likes to be cheated, deceived, or told lies? I guess no one. Is there any animal that likes to get attacked and devoured by any other animal? No. No entrepreneur likes to be taken for a ride by others. But when it comes to others, everything looks fair in the game. Cheating for profit, fudging the books of accounts to help the corporate bigwigs, using funds from the banks with the connivance from the bank officials, rigging the market, and all such behavior becomes a predatory and commonplace occurrence. Laszlo Zulanai, the professor of ethics and director of the Business Ethics Center at Corvinus University in Budapest says, and I quote, the recent economic and financial crisis shows that business ethics lost its credibility and relevance. It became evident that business ethics teaching did not change the general attitude of managers in mainstream business. Ethics and compliance programs were not able to prevent major banks and big corporations to enter into questionable practices and make dirty business decisions all across the globe. One explanation of the betrayal of business ethics is that our discipline did not question the underlying models of mainstream business, namely profit maximization. Also, business ethics did not have the challenge, did not have the courage to challenge institutional structure. In sum, while I do not want to get cheated, but would not mind cheating others is the name of the game as it appears. As someone rightly pointed out, that a course or training on ethical behavior is not like a shot of polio vaccine. Such inoculation will not have any effect on someone who has perfected the art and science, if you will, of cheating in business. However, it is possible to teach the willing student how to avoid conflicts between individual code of behavior and the expectation of the organizations from them. Of course, we have many cynical people who would argue that in a world full of dishonest behavior and unethical transgressions, the individual with right values has no space and is left with truly little choice. It is as if somebody in a three-piece suit moving in a nudist colony and the question is who gets ashamed? Either he joins the bandwagon or left on the wayside. I would try answering this by narrating a story, a parable which is quite popular in the Indian folklore. In ancient India, in a state that was ruled by a very devout and religious king, 
who was a staunch worshipper of Lord Shiva. One day he issued a royal proclamation that all the people of his state must on a particular day bring a glass of milk as an offering to be brought and poured over the Lord. Everyone in the state thought that any which way the others are going to get milk, so why bother carry, uh, wasting a glass of milk? Hence they thought to get a glass full of water. And what was the result? The temple was filled with water instead of milk. My father used to add one more line to the story and that was, if at least one, I repeat one, person would have brought a glass of milk, then the color of the water would have changed. And that is a moral for the society. The color of the society that has been so vitiated by the greed, selfishness and dishonesty needs to change its color. The process should start with the individuals. Let us not worry over the society, but start changing things which we can change ourselves within ourselves. In the ancient Indian text, Bhagavad Gita, there is a line that epitomizes the ancient wisdom of the virtue and the value of values. It runs like this in Sanskrit, Yadyada charati sheshtaha tatta deve tarojanaha sayat pramanam kurute lokas tadanu vartate. The elders in the society must by their behavior and not merely by their precepts lay before the youngers a decent and honest pattern of behavior. The youngers are bound to follow it, but if there is a difference and wide divergence between the precept and practice, then there is no hope of mere precepts being followed, ignoring the dishonest and unethical behavior. So any change for good has to start with me rather than worrying about the society. Thank you very much.